we're going to spend on the marketing activities and keep increasing the revenue. I'll give you an example, and I don't have that much in slides uh, to talk about all of this, but in, in Acton, for example, we run the, our entire company on this. We're about a 350-person company. We have 3,000 customers. It's all run on the Acton system and the Salesforce system, Salesforce for the sales uh, force automation. And uh, essentially, we have well-defined processes by which when a lead hits a particular lead score, it gets triggered and goes to a salesperson. Until such time as it doesn't hit that lead score, it continues to get nurtured in the marketing group. Um, so uh, here's an example of something that happens. Uh, we have, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not doing this today, you should think about doing it, which is, do you send notifications to your salespeople when something of interest happens? Salespeople at any given point are always talking to a variety of different opportunities. They've got people that they're talking to at, at some point in time, they're, they're in their pipeline. What happens when that particular person comes to the website and say, scans or, or, or uh, goes through and sees an online demo or reads a piece of content or downloads a white paper or downloads a video? Is there a notification set up to tell the salesperson that one of the people that they're interacting with just did that, right? That's something that you should be thinking about doing because that's timely, it's contextual, and it's something that gives a salesperson uh, an immediate reason to call up and have a dialogue with that person. So real-time notifications, for example, are another way why the marketing organization now is directly involved in instigating and helping the sales organization do something. Um, with, with the system for marketing automation, you should be able to, and this is a little bit of an eye chart, so I'll read out what this is. Every salesperson in, in your company should be able to look at a prospect and be able to tell what that prospect has done over a period of time. So in this particular case, we've got, this is hard to read, but there's a, there's a prospect there called William Taylor, and that dashboard there shows the salesperson, when they're in their sales automation system and they bring up William Taylor's name, all of this engagement information that William Taylor has gone through with that, with that company through the marketing system is now available. So some of the things that I can see as a salesperson is, well, William Taylor has registered for two webinars and he's only shown up at one. Uh, he has received 19 emails from us and he's opened seven of them. He's visited, um, he's clicked on forms and he's downloaded four white papers. Now that sort of information as a salesperson, when I look at that, I'm going, okay, now I've got a much better idea of this William Taylor guy that I'm talking to. I've got a sense of what he's done, how much time he's spent, right? And over what period of time? And I've got a lead score there, a lead score of 116 for William Taylor. I'm just reading that out. As a salesperson now, I can click on that 116 and say, what contributed to that 116? Well, some of it was perhaps because William Taylor is, um, uh, you know, a vice president at a, at a company. Um, but the other stuff is because he's done all these things with me. So he's got these behavioral scores. Suddenly, so much more insight, right? And, and, uh, and that intelligence will save me time and more effectively close the deal. So once again, this is obvious. I mean, you, you know, that intelligence gets you the ability to understand your prospects as a salesperson. Um, and uh, more importantly, it gets you to basically have a better dialogue with them. Now, the important thing for all of us who are in marketing, you'll find that you know, leads will come, they'll convert into opportunities, and all of them are not going to become customers. Right? That's just a fact of life. But here's another interesting factoid. 80% of prospects that are deemed to be bad leads by a traditional sales organization come back to close and buy something within 24 months. Now that, for those of us in marketing who are spending 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds a lead, think about it. You're generating 5,000 leads in a, in, a, in a given quarter. Do you want to just let them go if, if the salesperson says this is a bad lead or it's not, they're not ready to buy or they're not whatever it is? Get them back into a nurturing track. So as a marketer, one of the first things you should think about is do you have a nurturing track for leads that have been rejected for some reason or the other? Because there's a high probability that in the next 12 to 24 months, they're gonna come back and buy something. That's where marketing comes back in. So a good rule of thumb, what we tell our customers is that those lead scores, zero them out after a given period of time. 
What is, your what is your sales cycle? How many days is your sales cycle? Is it a three month cycle? Is it a six month cycle? Depending on what your sales cycle is, you want to take those lead scores and zero them out after say four or five months and say, you know, if no one has done any activity in five months, make it a zero lead score, put them back in the marketing system, continue to nurture market to them. If they start taking interest again, build them up again. Okay. And finally, so that's, we talk about convert, lead to revenue, all the way through to, you know, how the marketing and the sales organization can work together, do a bunch of things that can be used by both groups uh, to be able to bring in a customer. Last piece I'm going to talk to you about is expand, and that's the last couple of minutes, is don't stop at just bringing in your customer and, and, and signing them up and closing them as a deal. We as marketers are responsible for this process of expanding making sure we build that relationship. What's also happening in this new world is that the marketing system is becoming a system of engagement. If you think that the Salesforce automation system is a system of record, the marketing system is a system of engagement because you should be engaging your customers all the way through from lead and beyond in revenue as they become customers. Collect that engagement data because that engagement data can be used not only by the sales team, but also, for example, by the customer support team. If I'm a customer support person and I see what engagement has happened with my a customer, how many white papers they downloaded or what, they, what they've been looking at on my website, I can speak to them so much more effectively. Um, the, the, once again, the data here is obvious. You know, it's six to seven times more expensive to sell to someone new than to sell to someone you already have as a customer. This is an age-old classic piece of data that was developed and published by McKinsey, you know, more than a decade ago. Uh, and of course, you know, and they're more profitable customers for you. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, except that the net of this slide is we, we as marketers end up, and most people, we end up spending so much time on, on people who are unhappy with us or really, really happy with us. And we end up ignoring that whole middle part. And once again, as marketers, this says, this is a call to action. Develop programs. We talked about personas and things like that. Develop that for your existing customers also. Make sure to continue to engage with them because chances are you're spending a lot of time on the most vulnerable customers and the ones who are really happy, but there's a huge majority in there that you're not spending enough time with and not engaging with. And, and you should do that because that's going to end up with you know, the ability to build more and more loyalty. Once again, as a marketer, when you're thinking about using a platform or an automation system and, and some of these techniques of marketing, don't just think about the lead to revenue, but think about how you can do this after revenue also. Take an example of lead scoring. We talked about lead scoring. How important is the lead so that a salesperson can more effectively do this? Think about customer scoring also. Once again, in your marketing system, you can define what the criteria is for scoring your customers. Build up that score. So that now your customer success person, a person who's a support person who's talking to your customer, can look at that score and say, wait a minute, this is an important customer. They've got a high customer success score. Based on various criteria. They've got multiple products. They interact with you. They show up in user groups. They've given a referral to other customers. You'll get a good sense of what those customer scores are. Think about building a curriculum for that also. So with that said, Thank you very much. I think I'm probably a minute or two over time, and I don't know if you've got time for questions, but we're around, and we'll be happy to answer any. Thank you. Thanks, Ashbury. Thank, Thank you. Um, let's have one, one, uh, one burning question. I know it's lunch time, but um, I, I've got one if, if you guys Okay. Have, so you and that's the only thing that's keeping us from lunch, so <laughs> you better ask away quickly. <laughs> so just, just, just tell me, how much of a dramatic difference you've seen it made to, to, to your clients when you know, people have moved on to this sort of completely automated approach? Um, so it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, a couple of things. I'll give you um, three major things that happen with clients. And uh, one is that uh, uh, they are, it, it forces a discipline of thinking through the uh, lead to revenue cycle. That's a very important piece. So, the thinking process changes. It's not just about using a tool and a product, it's about the know-how and what you're doing and what you start thinking about doing. Paige talked about all the different, mm -hmm. we talked about all the different channels. You start thinking as a multi-channel marketer, one. 
The second one is that you have a lot more visibility into metrics. This is a metrics-based game. We can measure almost anything now. And so one of the eye-opening things for just about all of our customers is the fact that now they've got so much visibility into the metrics. I'll give you a simple example. Most of our customers do pay-per-click advertising using Google. We've integrated with Google. Now, not only can you see how many clicks you get, but you can see how many of those clicks became leads, how many of those leads became opportunities, and how many of those opportunities became sales. You have so much more visibility for spending two, three, four thousand pounds a month, which is not uncommon for most companies to do pay-per-click advertising. You actually know how much of that money actually became uh, converted into business. And then finally, the third thing is that typically, marketers over a period of time they'll see um, a 30 to 50% increase in lead to revenue. Not because, not because of a system like this alone, but it's because of all the things. They start thinking, they start measuring, they start improving all along the way, from conversion rates to clicks and all the sort of thing. And, and that results in higher and higher um, performance. Does that answer your Thank question? You very much. Okay, thanks. Uh, who's back in here? Uh, next time, is it? Five, two. What time do we come back in here?